Hello and welcome back to our series where we are breaking down the medical science from The Last of Us. This is episode four. As before, spoilers and content warning, it might be pretty gory. Something I've noticed in the intro here is that the way the fungus is spreading in the credits is very much like the slime mold the way that spreads that we talked about in our reaction to episode two. I'm pretty sure that that would be the inspiration for those opening credits. We have Ellie here practicing her gun poses. This reminds me of the storytelling prompt of Chekhov's gun, that you don't put a gun in the first act if you're not gonna fire it by act three. So, I think we know where this is going. Pictures. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Put that back. That's not for kids. How do you even walk around with that thing? Please get rid of it. Oh, your horses. <laughs> I want to see what all the fuss is about. Why are all these pages stuck together? Uh... <laughs> um... Not a lot to say about that. Slow down. This is slow. What am I even eating? That is 20-year-old Chef Boyardee ravioli. That guy was good. Does anyone else really fancy trying some 20-year-old Chef Boyardee ravioli right now? I certainly do. I can imagine the celebrations going on right now in the Chef Boyardee ravioli PR department. I mean, I've never heard of it until now, but looking it up, it also contains no preservatives, which makes it even more impressive that it's been kept for 20 years, although, I think that's more to do with the canning process. There was actually an experiment on a can of corn from the 1930s, which was analyzed and it was still edible, even though it had lost a bunch of nutritional value, it was still good enough to eat. So what they're experiencing here totally makes sense. Although I probably have to say, <laughs> for health and safety and legal purposes, don't ever try this. I mean, the real issues are if the can isn't packaged properly or becomes damaged in some way and then bacteria can get in. And then suddenly it goes from lasting like 50 years to maybe a couple of days. The bug that everyone worries about, but it's actually pretty rare, is Clostridium botulinum. So a bacteria that's found in soil and water that produces a toxin called botulinum that paralyzes your nerves. And that's where we get Botox from. You know, that drug that wrinkly people inject into their foreheads to look more like people like me. But yeah, if you eat enough of this botulinum toxin, you'll not be able to use your muscles to breathe and it'll kill you. And the reason it's so annoying is that the bacteria is anaerobic. So just being in a can without oxygen, that's not a problem for it. And it can even survive being boiled. Therefore to kill it requires a pressurized canning process, meaning we can raise the temperature up even more to kill the bacteria. And that's no doubt how Chef Bayardi prepares his ravioli. So it tastes so good after 20 years. I actually agree. Are you okay? Yeah. You're not hurt, nothing. I don't think so. I mean, don't for a minute underestimate the crash force of an accident like this. And no airbag deployed as well. So most concerning would be a traumatic brain injury or spinal injury from the whiplash movement, or if there's any impact onto the steering column or dashboard. The seatbelt here has no doubt saved their lives, but can also cause significant abdominal trauma. So bruising to the abdominal muscles, as well as damage to the organs, what we call seatbelt syndrome. When seatbelts were first kind of rolled out, lots of people thought there was a bit of a problem because loads of people were coming to hospital with injuries from them. But <laughs> this example of survivorship bias, because most of the people that didn't wear the seatbelts ended up dying, so not presenting to hospital. Oh, 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 what a shot by Joel. Kind of 180 no scope headshot. And you see the exit wound here and the blood splatter as the bullet's gone straight through the head. So a through and through skull fracture with traumatic brain injury. There is no chance of surviving that. The dude 
absolutely eats that gun butt respect you'd probably expect him to get knocked out from that and lucky not to get a jaw fracture or a fracture to the cheekbone no, so joel here getting strangulated uh, with an air choke from the gun pushing down on his windpipe. Really what saves him here is the thyroid cartilage doing its job in protecting the airway. What he is at risk of though would be a fracture to this or the cricoid cartilage below, meaning you'd lose the structural integrity of the larynx. And even if that pressure was then released, you're still at risk of suffocating. And if he did damage his upper airway and it was occluded so he couldn't breathe anymore, his only hope would be an emergency cricothyroidotomy where we make a hole between the two cartilages, put a tube in there, enabling him to breathe like that infamous bus scene from Nobody. So there we have it, Ellie to the rescue and Chekhov's gun <laughs> storytelling principle remains intact. The angle that Ellie shoots this bad dude though is not a great idea as at this close range, it's highly likely the bullet will go completely through the bad guy and into Joel. And I may be being cynical, but do you think the editors noticed this and that's the reason why they actually don't show the impact of the bullet? Maybe, or maybe the most important thing is Ellie's reaction, so that's why they focus on her. But yeah, Joel, lucky not to get a gunshot wound himself. Will he live? What if I had a doctor? There's no chance. I'm sorry. <laughs> what the hell? You gotta... You've got to give us something to work with here. Just the doctor alone here isn't going to do anything. Surviving a cardiac arrest outside a hospital is hard enough, around 10%, but not in this type of patient. Cardiac arrest from trauma is basically no chance. I mean, you still do CPR, but you're really fighting against the odds. And even if you get the heart going again, then what? You may have a doctor, but you don't have any equipment, any way to intubate or ventilate the patient, any surgical facilities, any blood to transfuse. So the general is right to be pessimistic. Also, this dude that's basically declared him dead, I'm not quite sure what he's doing. His hands are in the position to be doing CPR, but at no point in the actual scene does he do any. And everyone else just standing around, probably thinking, what the hell is that guy doing? So he definitely needs to go online and redo his mandatory e-learning. So there you go, another brilliant episode. I think it was more of a character and world building one. Had a bit more humor in it for me between Ellie and Joel and also highlighting that it's not just this fungus we're worried about and the zombies, it's also other people killing each other and so let me know your thoughts on the episode anything i've missed or theories you've got i'm absolutely loving covering this show and that's in big part as well of reading your theories and your comments and hopefully i can incorporate them into future videos too so thank you so much for that if you have enjoyed this video give it a like give it a subscribe i hope you're all well and i'll be back soon